All we will know about the knighting ceremony is it was behind closed doors, a private affair between the queen, her husband, the general, and his wife. The few pictures taken of the event are apparently for the general's scrapbook. It wasn't until after he was knighted that he posed on the steps of Central Command, the ribbon of knighthood in his hands. You know, we were really brothers in arms, comrades in arms throughout the entire war. And, and this war today, I mean, the war today represented the, the culmination of all of that. It was a, I told the queen when she gave it to me that the greatest honor I had was the fact of serving side by side with the magnificent uh, men of, of the armed service of the kingdom. While we don't have royalty in this country, General Schwarzkopf has received the royal treatment since returning home, something that doesn't seem to go to his head. This is a man who still has a sense of humor. Asked by a British reporter, where will you put your knighthood medal? The general answered, I'm going to wear it around my neck, of course. That... <laughs> the queen's visit was not just for the muckety-mucks, the queen at one end, her husband at the other, together working a crowd inside Hangar 3 at the Air Force Base. Among those here, what might be called commoners in England, low-ranking members of the military who served in Desert Storm. Also invited, retired members of the military, like Master Sergeant Danny Lewis. Uh, she just very generally asked, are you from Tampa? And says, uh, yes, we are. <laughs> I'm sort of speechless. You're, so oh, you're speechless. Yeah. She was very beautiful, you know, very uh, stately, enjoyed meeting her. To put into perspective how lucky these people really are, consider the fact that few people in Britain have this opportunity. At McDill Air Force Base, Kerry Sanders, Channel 13, Eyewitness News.